next question, we're going to go to Lizzie Campbell in Coventry. Lizzie, could we have your first question? Hi there, Gerald. Great to talk to you. Hi. Um, I've got quite a long question, so I'm going to read it out, if that's okay. Okay. Um, uh, in the past, there was a few uh, clear channels through which to get satirical work published. Uh, that was through print, radio, and latterly TV. With the birth of the internet and the proliferation of newly formed satirical voices, has our taste for satire as a society changed, and is it more difficult to come up with original ideas? Well, I guess uh, newspapers are on the decline, which has been my main channel. But I wouldn't think, I hope to God, that our taste for satire is not declining, because really, you know, what is so great about our society is we are able to question things. We're, we're able mm -hmm. to express our point of view. And um, I would hate that. Well, I had an exhibition in Germany. Okay. Something happened? Sorry. No. It dropped out a little bit. Yeah. Okay. It's back now. What I was saying is that I had a... You heard the bit where I was saying, I hope to God that satirical point of view yeah. won't ever stop because, you know, it's so important that we can criticize those who think they know the way we should lead our lives, those who think that they are our betters. Um, it is so very, very healthy to be able to say, like a jester used to say to the king, you are wrong, you are wrong. Mm. Uh, but um, the out, you know, the, the, as you say, the, um, well, no, I was going to say, I had an exhibition in Germany recently, and um, at the opening night, a lot of other artists came from Germany to, to be there with me at the opening. And um, they said, we couldn't do this stuff in our country. We couldn't draw this in Germany. This is Germany. You know, just, I would have thought. So in, the, the amount of criticism I give to the public figures is, I'm glad to say, um, privileged and exceptional. Because even in America, if I, te if I tr and I do work in America, you kind of have to sort of tame it down a little bit for America. Mm. In this country at the moment, and I hope it continues, we have complete not complete. We have freedom of speech in general. Obviously, if I'm working in the Sunday Times, where I've worked for the last um, 47 years as political cartoonist, I can do pretty well anything politically, but I can't show anything overtly sexual, obviously, in what they call it a family newspaper. So, um, you know, there are limitations, but the limitations, thank God, and as we know, in certain parts of the world, there is no criticism at all. There is no press that is able to... to I was talking to a lady from uh, Hong Kong came to uh, um, interview me yesterday, and she said the situation there is that there, there is no criticism, really, in, in, in that part of China. And that's, that's the free part of China, Hong Kong. Mm. We know that the Middle East and all of, that, all of those areas, it's very, very tough. And some cartoonists have, uh, you know, been attacked personally, and, and one guy had his uh, his hands smashed because he was doing cartoon okay. in the A terrible situation. Anyway, as for outlets, um, I, I, as I said at the beginning, I'm not computer literate, so I'm probably the wrong person to talk to, but I hope that the internet will become, um, you know, an open, where, where you will be able to draw. I mean, I know there are animations and there are cartoons on the internet and drawings, when it comes to illustrating a book, I mean, if there are hard, hard uh, copy books, they're not. Well, but I, I hope that illustrated books will always be there. There'll always be an illustrated version of Alice in Wonderland or whatever. You know, I hope that doesn't uh, collapse. Um, because, um, but then if you uh, if you run out of books or you run out of newspapers, why don't you try some um, some walls like Banksy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank um, you. Ne thanks very much. Next, we're going to go to Francesco in Italy. Could we have your first question? Oh, yes. Hi, Gerald. Hi. Uh, how should I introduce myself and my work as illustrator to positively impress uh, a publishing house or, or a magazine editor? What's the best approach? And how do you go about it? Well, I, I think, uh, Francesco, that any uh, 
any editor who's looking at your work or anyone who's looking at your work wants it to be simply presented, very, very clear, not, and you want to think before you go in what you want to say about it, because quite often they're very busy people, and they can't look at a whole mass of stuff, so you need to trim down your work to what you think is the essence of it, and um, then, um, you know, present it as, 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 as simply as you can. Um, I used to find with my editor in the Sunday Times that he, he, quite often I would go in and he wouldn't know what the hell my cartoon was about, so uh, I had to sort of explain it to him as I came in the doorway because I, you know, otherwise he would be confused. You've got to remember that a lot of people, even art directors, don't understand what we artists are trying to do. They don't understand art, and the great mass of the public, when they go into an art gallery, they know that they should appreciate art, but they don't quite know how to do it or or, or, or whether they do or not appreciate it. Um, so I would say, you know, the answer is make it as simple as possible, be as clear as possible, and you, of course, will choose your work. You know which you think is the best, and just put the best in. Um, what part of Italy are you in, Francesco? I'm in the center. In the center of where? Um, near the Adriatic Sea. Uh -huh. No, I have a, my, my son is down near Napoli. He lives in Amalfi. So okay. I'm used to that part of the world where I go all the time. Yeah. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to go to Sophia in London. Sophia, could we have your first question? Hi. Right, um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah. So I do. Perfect. How do you create and develop your characters? Do you maintain a personal emotional relationship with them, or do you have a distance and bias stance in your process of creation? Well, it depends. I mean, the characters obviously in the newspaper are already made for me. There are political figures. They are, you know, David Cameron and Nick Clegg and um, all of that mob. Uh, as I say, I find it boring drawing them over and over again, but that's my job. Um, when I'm creating characters for, like, Pink Floyd the Wall or for Disney's Hercules, naturally I, I read the script, I, I look at the, um, what, what the essence of them is. For instance, in Hercules there's the, the devil who was called Hades in this particular issue, and I thought, how can I treat Hades? You know, he's... He's a fascinating character, because always the wickedest characters are the most fascinating to do, I find. You, know, you go anywhere, you find that the heroes are boring people, and the, uh, the, the, the wicked ones, the, you know, the, the cool ones, you want to know what happens to them. Anyway, I thought, because this guy was the, the god of hell, he should have some fire about him, you know. So I made him uh, with little bits of fire playing around his hair, uh, and then little bits along the end of his finger, a little bit of fire, and blue fire, and then when he got angry, he would explode with fire, and it burst into a great fireball. So I used fire, in his case, as an expression of his character. Other times, you know, they're just straightforward costumes, and I'm dealing with people in the ballet or the opera, and the, the interesting thing about making a character for the ballet is that um, you can put anything you want onto their top half, top half with, with reason, um, but you must leave their legs free because of their dance and you want to see the shape of them and so forth. It's the opposite in a way in, in opera because uh, you can put what you like on their legs because they don't move much anyway, but you can't put stuff around their head and mouth and face. Uh, that's... Um, you know, where, where they operate from. So, but actually, arriving at characters, it's just reading, you know, reading the book. Um, and everybody has a different point of view. I'm sure if we, all of you, read one book, um, shall we say, again, Alice in Wonderland, you would all have a totally different um, idea of what the characters were like. So, it's up to you. Uh, I love your work, Sophie, by the way. It's got a kind of a nice, uh, surreal quality to it. Are you, are you interested in surreality at all? 
Excuse me, sorry? Are you interested in surreal, surreal work, in surreal paintings? Because your work has that element. Yeah, I, I, I really like surrealism, but also absurdism, more specifically, generally, oh. in my work. But it's a long story. It's great. Thank you.